All right, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. Well, maybe not so exciting for me, but maybe for you guys. Because <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and talk some story and share with you guys how me and my girlfriend got parasite, got a parasite, or maybe even more than one parasite when we are in our trip to Costa Rica. Now this was not my first trip to Costa Rica. I've been there uh, three other, two, two to three other times and I've never had an issue. I've traveled all over the world and never had any kind of parasites that I've known of <laughs> until now. So it's actually kind of sad. So while we were in Costa Rica, we went to uh, Punta Mona, which is an off the grid um, permaculture retreat center that hosted the Costa Rica Fruit Festival and that was for a full week and so that's all off the grid living um, I don't know if we got it there I can't say for sure I can't say exactly where we got it from but I do know that I have checked with some other friends and people that have attended that event and nobody has, have, has uh, had any symptoms like me and my girlfriend has that being said, after we went to that event, we did go and stay at some American-style hotels oh, and, a, and a bed and breakfast uh, place for one day. We went to the farmer's market and, um, and went to a raw food restaurant. And so we ate food at the American-style hotels, which should have proper sanitation. And we did eat at a raw food restaurant, which the, epi the last episode, which that is what it is. And it's a raw food restaurant. So, you know... I could confidently say one of the places that we ate at or had food from or were in contact with some services had some parasite contamination and consequently we got it, which really kind of sucked. So the story goes is basically on the flight back from Costa Rica, my girlfriend, like when, when we were on the airplane, she was just like kind of in pain and then when we get off the airplane, she's like really like hunched over. Like I've never seen her in so much pain, like hunched over, like walking, like she's, she's in super pain. She's like, John, this is probably one of the worst stomach aches I've ever had in my life. And a scale from, you know, zero out of 10, this is like a nine. And she could like barely walk. So this is like really terrible. So we had, we finally got her out. And then I got, I came around with a car to pick her up and took her home. And she found out that when she stood up, it was worse. And when she lied down, it felt better. So that's what happened with her. And, uh, and then, like, I was kind of feeling fine. I, kept, I felt something kind of weird going on in my stomach, but I wasn't, like, in pain or anything weird. I just kind of felt a little bit bloaty, and sometimes I feel bloaty after I eat. And then, uh, I guess maybe, like, the next day, that's when it really hit me. Like, the next day I had, like, a small meal, maybe, like, no more than a pound of food, which is, like, nothing, because I'll sit and, like, hunk down a couple pounds of fruit or, so fruit or something like that. And like just having a small amount, which wasn't even getting me enough calories to survive or to eat, all of a sudden my my stomach would just hurt. All of a sudden I would bloat out like really bad, and I, I would have to lie down because like the pains were just really really terrible. So once I lied down, that kind of like helped a little bit, and then over time the pains kind of went away, and then I was able to function again until I ate again, and then I'd have to like really not eat a whole lot of quantity of stuff before I bloat up and start feeling like like stomach ache again and of course you know I was also having some bad gas <laughs> and also some stools or some uh, bowel movements that were not normal that maybe like were a little bit more watery than normal and yeah so this was not a good thing and I was like, man, what's wrong? What's wrong with us and stuff? So then I went online, did some searches and a bunch of different searches based on our symptoms. I figured we have this uh, parasite called Girardia. And so the only way, way I know Girardia is like when I would sell like water filters, I'm like a carbon, a good solid carbon water filter would filter out Girardia and Cryptosporidium, which are two water and borne illnesses that you know are fairly uncommon in the United States but maybe more common in undeveloped parts of the world you know where they have you know uh, feces and streams and maybe they just don't have the level of cleanliness and hygiene that we have here in the states or in other parts of the developed world that being said even parts of the developed world can get Girardia you know especially with pets pets are one of the major major contamination vectors um, but anyways enough of that 
Uh, so anyways, I figured we had Gerardia, and that would cause symptoms like we got. Now, it may be another parasite, but I'm kind of sure it's Gerardia, and no matter what the parasite is, you know, what I'm doing about it, or the treatment, would be very similar. So, um, you know, I don't have any kind of medical insurance, so I can't just go to the hospital and say, here's my insurance, you know, fix me up, doc. <laughs> you know, and the other thing is, I want you guys to remember that doctors are practicing. And I want to give you guys a disclaimer right now. I'm sharing with you guys what I did for this condition. If you guys have this condition, I would encourage you guys to go to your doctor, if you have a medical doctor, and to do, you know, what they say, if that's what you feel right, or, you know, if you want to take your health into your own hands, which, you know, I mean, if I misdiagnose what I have and I'm not doing the right protocols, you know, it might not be good. <laughs> I could really end up even sicker or possibly lose my life, but that is a risk I'm willing to take, right? So, uh, but I'm being smart about it, right? So, I'm noticing where I'm at. I'm doing my protocol that I'll explain to you guys, and I'm noticing if I'm getting better or worse. And in general, overall, I'm feeling better than worse. And also, I will say that I do have the backup plan, uh, which is some drugs, which is the Tindazole which is a re really powerful antibiotic, which I do have in case it gets really bad. I'll take that. You know, my preference is not to take antibiotics unless it's like, you know, really bad and to try to do the natural treatment. Because as much as you think doctors have all the answers, you know, what they have in their arsenal the majority of the time is drugs. You know, and drugs, on one hand, they're, they're a good thing, right? They could, they could help heal you from certain conditions. On some other hands, you're going to be on drugs for the rest of your life for your conditions because they're really not going to heal you they're just going to mask the symptoms on the other hand you know drugs uh, you know they are drugs they're foreign chemical compounds that have effects in your body you know it could be positive effects in the case of killing bacteria or it could be negative effects as in wiping out all your beneficial flora that you've worked so hard to you know make or uh, toxic effects that could cause toxicity of your liver or toxicity of many other organs no matter what drug you're taking so I always want you guys and like I do I carefully weigh out like if I'm gonna take a drug what are some natural alternatives and not that I'm a supplement fiend and live my life by taking a ton of supplements but I definitely would agree that natural based supplements are better than drugs and, and when I have a condition I'm not just gonna sit here and oh just water fast John or just juice fast you'll get rid of the Giardia that may be the case but you know I want to give it that extra punch and this is what I choose to do once again in my life right if you guys get Giardia and you guys want to water fast or juice fast or do whatever you guys want to do I wish you guys the best of luck I'm just sharing with you guys what I chose to do in this case and it's working so I guess we'll backtrack here for a second. So my girlfriend, on the other hand, she's not exactly doing my protocol, right? We, we, we're two different people. We have two different minds. We do things, a lot of things differently. We do some things the same. But uh, she's doing it a little bit differently than I am, and that's great. And it's interesting to see, like, how she is progressing and how I'm progressing. Basically, she wanted the Arise and Shine cleanse, and that's how she's dealing with the parasite is going on this cleanse, where she does psyllium bentonite shakes every one and a half hours, does an herbal chomper, and uh, some uh, herbal nutrition uh, pills pretty much the whole day and she's either drinking juice or eating whole foods like fruits and vegetables for the most part. And so when she's on this program, because it's been like a week now since this both the episode started for both of us, uh, when she's on the program she was fine and then she stopped doing the cleanse because she wasn't doing it perfectly and she's like, I'm going to just not do it, I'm going to do it later and then her pains and everything came back really bad. Meanwhile, and then she got back on the program, and then they went away again. So I'm thinking maybe the, you know, the psyllium bentonite kind of like keeps pl flushing the stuff out so it can't get a strong foothold. But, you know, although she is taking some herbs that may be helping to control the parasite, maybe it's not really working that effectively. Meanwhile, I got a full on, you know, in my opinion, I'm taking a full on attack approach to the parasites, man. Like, I don't want these parasites. I told them, I gave them fair warning, like, parasites, you, need to, you guys need to leave my body because it's war and I'm, I'm taking you guys out if you guys don't leave and you could just go somewhere else and infect somebody else or do whatever because I am not going to be hospital environment for parasites so anyways I got a number of different products I'm going to share with you guys the first of which is this one this is called the Parasite Free by Body Force powerful knockout for all stages of parasites including eggs, larvae and adults and it says everyone has parasites also good for candida yeast, mold, fungus, bacteria, viruses, cold and flu 
preservative free vegan organic wild crafted so this came uh, very highly recommended to me by my girlfriend actually because she's been on this before so she actually had two bottles so she gave me one <laughs> so I'm grateful it's not too bad you know I take I think a I was taking like five pills like once a day and then I progressed to like seven pills maybe like twice a day like maybe morning and night so that's my parasite free herbs that's kind of one of the top things and then I have a, I had a few other things laying around so I ordered so I already have this laying around the uh, ultimate mono Lauren, which is a medium uh, chain fatty acids extracted from coconut oil so it's the uh, lor lauric acid which is the mono Lauren, and this is a well, it's mono Lauren from lauric acid, and it's like 95%. So, this is supposed to be like antibacterial, antiviral, and anti all these other things. So, I'm taking this maybe like once a day, two of the little uh, uh, teaspoon things in there, and then oh, and so then that was working pretty good. Then I'm like, I did more research, I'm like, man, I'm killing these suckers, what else could help me? And then I looked it up, and like this, this looked like a pretty good product, it's actually called the Berberine. So it's from barberries, so it'd be good if I had a lot of barberries to eat them. But then they basically concentrate uh, one of the specific nutrients in barberries into this, the berberine, which actually has uh, some studies, scientific studies that show this is effective with um, the uh, gerardia, which is a protozoan parasite that infects your small intestines. And so consequently, that's why you know we had gas and bloating and uh, diarrhea. Once I got on this program, though, and started doing it regularly then my um the bloating pretty much subsided i was able to eat almost back to normal i have some stomach things that i kind of feel a little bit of discomfort maybe like one out of a scale of one to ten so i feel something's like not totally perfect with me but for the most part i'm functionally normal normally now have my standard energy and all this stuff you know once i got on this protocol but anyways the uh, berberine i take a uh, two 500 milligram capsules uh, once a day and uh, I don't take the capsules, I actually open the capsules and put it in my mouth in water and that stuff tastes nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. But if it's working, man, I don't care. Of course, another thing to fight bad bacteria and parasites is good bacteria, which are your friendly bacteria. You know, the friendly bacteria make up part of your immune system. This is just one of the many different probiotics that I'm taking. I'm taking a wide variety of different probiotics because certain probiotics, uh, do, based on research that I've seen, have been shown to be more effective or not against things like Girardia. So I ordered some special probiotics uh, for, specifically for this uh, instance. Some of them were actually kind of hard to find varieties. I actually had to get a baby uh, probiotic um, that had the special probiotics in there that we should have in our guts, but I want to increase the quantity of them in me to help get over this gerardia. But this one here is actually called the uh, Essential Formas Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics. And this has live culture, so I like this one because it's not just some white powdered stuff. It's actually a real food. So they basically get foods from the mountains of Japan. They ferment it with this special probiotic culture. And then they basically put the, the food mixture in little capsules that then you could take. So it's like a food with the probiotics living in there. And some very special strains and very powerful. So like normally if I get kind of digestive upset, if I'm in a foreign country, I take like four of these. And you no, know, it goes away. Now another thing that I'm taking besides all these guys is I think it's very important to take some digestive enzymes, especially in a situation like this, right? Um, different parasites and other things that may be living inside you, worms or whatever, you know, they are made of protein and digestive enzymes that have high proteinase, which is a, an enzyme that digests protein, may be helpful with these situations. So this one has protease 1, 20,000 HUT, protease 2, 4,000 HUT, and it has a lot of other different uh, uh, enzymes in there that may help digest the cell walls and digest different things in your intestinal tract to help keep you clean and uh, running well. So yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend this particular brand, but I do recommend some nice strong enzymes. So I have been upping the dosage of the enzymes I've been taking recently. And once again, you know, I don't know which one of these products is totally helping. I'm taking them all because I don't care which one works. I'm taking them at different times of the day. So I'll take this at morning, 
this in the mid-afternoon, this I'll take kind of like around the parasite herbs, I'll take this at a different time, take this at a different time, like just all throughout the day, like before meals. Now, of course, aside from all these supplements that I'm taking, right, I'm also modifying the foods that I'm eating. I might not normally eat the foods that I'm going to share with you guys in these high quantities, but I am doing it now because, you know, I have a situation with the parasites and some foods are shown to be parasite resistant. Why are some foods parasite resistant? Well, because nature, right, nature has to deal with parasites, bugs, disease, and insects, and foods or plants have learned how to deal with these parasites or bugs or insects or bacteria throughout the millennia. So they have special compounds in there that are anti-parasitic. I mean, especially some of the herbs that are in this parasite cleanse are that way. But there's foods that I'm even growing in my garden that may be helpful, such as these guys. This is just standard garlic, right? So I've been eating copious amounts of garlic. If you smell me lately, you know, you'll smell like garlic emitting from my pores. When I wake up, I can smell my hands. I smell like garlic. So I do garlic, uh, you know, several times a day, usually in the morning, in the night, in the morning. I like to make this drink here. This is just my homegrown cucumbers juiced with garlic. So I, today I made like about 48 ounces of juice, juiced a whole bunch of cucumbers. I put three nice sized cloves of garlic in there. This is a pretty strong juice. Like I've been drinking this probably for like the last week and I just gave some to my girlfriend the other day and she's like, man, this is too strong. I was like, man, this is weak. I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of strong, but man, I just drink it because I'm like, Die, parasites! <laughs> so I have one for uh, later tonight. Now, so that's how I get my garlic in me in the daytime. And then at night, I usually have an evening meal with more garlic. So one of the favorite ones I've been doing is a uh, uh, mashed up avocados with a bunch of garlic, maybe like six cloves in there with some sprouted buckwheat and chopped parsley. One of my favorite recipes of all time. And the other favorite recipe I've been doing lately is I take a whole bunch of... Uh, ripe tomatoes. I'll put them in the bottom of a blender. I'll blend that up with maybe like some flax seeds or some walnuts or maybe some uh, macadamia nuts, like a handful's worth. And then I got that liquid base going. Then I'll add a whole bunch of red bell peppers or ripe bell peppers in there. And then I'll add like another three, four cloves of garlic in there with some Italian seasoning. Blend that up. And that'll be like my evening dinner. So I got another, you know, in the morning I'm getting like juiced garlic with cucumbers. And at night I'm getting kind of more of like an uh, Italian, you know, like a uh, gazpacho, tomato, pepper, you know, smoothie thing. <laughs> or salad or whatever. <laughs> with more garlic. So yeah, I've been uh, garlicking out. Oh, and then the other thing I'll eat sometimes is uh, uh, some freeze-dried blueberries. So I have seen some research showing that there's certain compounds in uh, that can be extracted from blueberries that may be effective against Gerardia also. Now, in addition to all these supplements and the foods that I'm normally eating, you know, I also am eating high nutrient dense foods because aside from trying to combat uh, the parasites with their different products and foods that I'm eating, I also want to ensure my body is still getting all required adequate nutrition, including vitamins and minerals, including zinc, including the vitamin B12, including the vitamin D, including the vitamin K2, including my essential fatty acids, because our bodies are complete systems. We require a plethora of nutrients to function optimally. If we're missing certain nutrients, our bodies will not be optimal at sustaining life properly and being at the highest level and have your immune system running at its optimal peak efficiency because you know in the end my immune system is taking care of part of the parasite situation and if I'm unhealthy because I'm eating junk food diet then my immune system is not going to be strong but by supporting my immune system with a healthy diet including lots of green foods and uh, you know fruits and vegetables as well as all these different uh, supplements that I'm taking you know, I figure I'm going to get over this parasite soon enough. And it's already been over a week, and I'm definitely majorly improved from how it was. I'm not back to quite normal yet, and yet these things happen. And so I just kind of, kind of, you know, go with the flow and just be happy that I'm still alive and nothing worse has happened. And, you know, I, I'm playing it smart too, right? So as much as I'm trying all these things and doing my dietary things, if it gets worse, I will go to the doctor, plunk down however much cash I need to plunk down to get seen, and get proper testing, you know, to figure out what's going on. The other thing that I'm more likely to do besides just go to see the doctor is, you know, uh, go out and get testing on my own for different kinds of parasites to see what 
uh, I have, and then I'll find natural treatments to treat it. And once again, this is what I choose to do. Once again, you guys need to figure out what you guys are going to do on your own accord. You know, once again, you know, my standard disclaimers, if you have a medical condition, please go see a medical practitioner that could help you out unless you want to take your life into your own hands, which is what I'm choosing to do. And I'm doing this smart, you know, I'm not being, uh, you know, stupid about it, in my opinion. That being said, I know a lot of you guys are going to have your own opinions about this. People are going to comment, John, you should just go see a doctor and all this stuff. You know, and I mean, think about it. What did people do before there was doctors, right? A hundred years ago, before there was doctors, right? We had all these natural herbal medicines, I mean, like wormwood and all these different things in here, quassia bark, butternut bark, you know, green hulls of black walnut, like native peoples and all these peoples knew all the different herbs and medicines to take from the forest to get better to heal themselves. But now we just rely on doctors. So there is another way, and uh, that's the way that I'm choosing to do. Whether you choose to do that or not, that's totally up to you. But I thought I'd just make this video to share with you guys what I'm doing and what appears uh, to be working at this time. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for now. And I, I would encourage you guys, if you guys uh, live or are traveling, you know, in countries outside of the U.S. or outside developed nations, you know, uh, please take extra hygiene precautions into your own hands, right? Uh, try to be sure of all the food you eat. Normally when I go to foreign countries, like I don't try to eat like a lot of leafy greens that maybe from questionable sources I try to like buy fruits that are all you know uh, pea that are that I need to peel myself and I try not to eat it at different restaurants and things because you don't know who didn't wash their hands or what happened and um, I try to just minimize my risk by you know controlling more of the food I eat and making sure you wash the food properly very important right a majority it can happen because somebody didn't wash their hands right so it's very important Another thing I'm doing is that I'm washing my hands even more prudently than I would normally would to make sure that I'm not going to reinfect me or anybody else, you know, that, I'm a, that, that, that I come in contact with at this time. So yeah, that's pretty much this episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode on how I got Gerardia from Costa Rica and how I'm dealing with it, or how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overcome it, uh, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this video to share with everybody. I got parasites, but you know what? Here's the thing. Most people have parasites and you may not know it. So, I mean, I think a really good thing to do is just go on a parasite cleanse. I don't think it could hurt you except hurt your pocketbook by, you know, fleecing you some cash. But the best case is you could kill some parasites and you'll be healthier because of it. You know, or it does nothing at all except you lose some money. So, yeah, most people have parasites. Yeah, go on a parasite cleanse. And, yeah, I mean, I like to have some of these products around just in case. Because, you know, some of the things, these things I take regularly, such as the probiotics and the enzymes... I even eat some garlic sometimes, you know, but just not in these high doses when I have this particular situation. Because, you know, I truly believe some foods like garlic are not just a food, but they're a medicinal food. And, yeah, you could use it for flavoring if you like it sometimes, but I use it for its medicinal properties instead of using it as just simply a food and eating it all the time. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. But anyways, uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode and want to hear more about this kind of stuff and get updates, give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to leave your nice comments down below on what you would do if you had this situation, if you had this situation before, and you know, how to prevent this situation from occurring in the future so that we could all learn from each other, because that's just the sim simple goal of my YouTube channel is to share with you guys what I'm going through and what I'm learning in my life so that maybe one of you guys going through a similar situation may also benefit. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes that I'm coming out of every uh, five to seven days, you never know what kind of topic I'll be discussing or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 400 episodes at this time. Share with you guys all aspects on how to live a healthy, uh, plant-based, fruit and vegetable dominated diet the best way possible so that you could be the healthiest and uh, thrive. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember... Keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best. Expo 2016, and we're in the hall with all the different heirloom fruits and vegetables. They got like displays of like garlic and tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and uh, melons and squash and watermelons and.